I don't know if you feel this way, John. Um, the Nuggets, a lot of things about them are being overblown because this is just a team, as I remember it, this past season. Oh, yeah, they're two-peating. Oh, yeah. Oh, who's going to stop the Nuggets? My goodness, the Nuggets are so damn good. They're unstoppable. They're unbeatable. There is no team that could beat them. No way the Timberwolves can beat them. Dallas, nope. OKC, nope. Too young. They don't have a dominant big that can handle Jokic defensively. And now all of a sudden they lose KCP and their championship window is closed. Since when was KCP an all-star? I understand his value. I understand KCP is really good. But let's stop acting like he's the difference between a championship and not a championship. Mm. There is still a way the Nuggets can bounce back and make it to the finals, even with losing KCP. Right. It's an interesting topic because a lot of the Nuggets expectations this year are based entirely off projections. Christian Brown, year three. Uh, you've got Julian Strother, who hardly played last year. This year in summer leagues, leaning and scoring, taking 11 threes a game. And then a guy like Peyton Watson, who has so much potential on the defensive side, but still so raw. In the playoffs this last year, we saw those guys offensively were just not ready to contribute. The theme with the Nuggets is they're disappointing, and there's no denying it's been a bad offseason because of the fact in consecutive summers, you've lost critical rotation pieces in KCP and Bruce Brown, and you can't fully replace them. They can just get that out of the way. Ownership in Denver does not want to go all the way into the luxury tax. And that's so disappointing, Joel, because – this is the last year before the super punitive tax penalties really kick in. So it's your last opportunity to make the absolute most with Nikola Jokic, 29 years old, a three-time league MVP. I think Nikola Jokic is a top 20 player of all time already. And he's not even 30 years old yet. So when you have that opportunity to make the absolute most of it, there's no denying it. They didn't do enough. That being said, the Nuggets this all season are going to still have the same core four players that last year won 57 games. And the fifth starter spot, you're replacing KCP with a guy who I think can be a better defensive player, which is something we saw in that Minnesota series. KCP could not stay in front or contain Anthony Edwards. With Christian Brown, he's a more versatile defender and I think a better on-ball threat. Offensively, it's where things are a bit questionable, right? Because Brown only took three three-point attempts per 36. But then you look at it, it's like KCP also only took four and a half. So if you get just a little bit more from uh, Christian Brown, now that he's playing alongside Nikola Jokic, the best passer in the world, you can start to close that offensive gap a little bit. He's not going to have the same respect. He's not going to have the same gravity. And you can't use him off DHO as an action the way you would with KCP. But he's still a good off-ball mover, a very good athlete who finishes well at the rim, and someone who plays out in transition. And what I like so much about Christian Brown getting more minutes is that him and Russell Westbrook are a really good fit together. In that second unit, Russ is a clear upgrade off Reggie Jackson. Reggie didn't play well this year. And what he brings you as an on-ball defender is going to be really valuable for 82 games. And I know Russ is kind of being thrown to the mud a little bit because of the fact he was really bad in that Maverick series this year. But coming into that series... A lot of people had high expectations for us because he was very valuable and he started to commit to a, a rotational role more so. And he started to humble himself a little bit as a former league MVP. And I think Russ playing off Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray can still bring that value, no doubt, in the regular season. It's just a question of when Bruce Brown came to the Nuggets, he took one three point attempt a game in Brooklyn. He still is able to fit into a smaller role. Can Russell Westbrook, who shot 27% of wide open threes, make just a little bit more of them too. I think those small little notes on the outskirts, the edges of the Nuggets rotation are going to make all the world of a difference. But if those guys like Russ and Christian Brown just marginally improve in a better situation, I don't think this team is going to look a whole lot different. Russell Westbrook shooting is something I will never believe in, even in a super small sample size and with ultimate spacing. I just think he just he just doesn't have a shot. That That's him. That's just him. But what I will say is that we also forget that Russell Westbrook is a high-level defender. And against Dallas, although offensively he was unplayable, he made things really tough on Luka Doncic, especially to begin the series. And you can argue that was the toughest defensive matchup for Luka. And it was a relief that he was so unbearable offensively that Talu couldn't play him more in that series because that could have been a potential difference maker. Yeah, He's a better it. defender than Bruce Brown. 
He's a better ball handler. Mm. He's a better playmaker. I, I just think that it's just the shooting that is just a major question mark. But Bruce Brown didn't shoot lights out in their finals run. He shot 33% from three. I, I think that we are overrating a lot of the Nuggets losses. And I did this when it first happened as well because Bruce Brown and KCP are really good. But my main concern with them this past season was the lack of a veteran presence off the bench. They didn't have that because they lost Jeff Green and Bruce Brown. And I think this year they did a great job at picking up what they didn't have last year. Russell Westbrook and Dario Saric are two really good veteran role players off your bench that I think can make a pretty good impact. They didn't have any depth, any big men depth because Zeke Naji has just regressed. But Dario Sarge can fill that role and he can play 15 minutes and shoot 38% from three and rebound. And that's somebody who now you have some big men depth. And the, the point about Christian Brown, I think he can replace everything that KCP brought. Wow. I, I think the shooting, wow. the, the shooting gravity is probably the only thing that I'm like, okay, it's going to take some time to build that cachet up. But mm -hmm. when you think about it, Christian Brown is a better defender than KCP. I don't think he's as good of a screen navigator. I think KCP really thrives in that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of guarding strong, downhill, explosive athletes, Christian yeah. Brown is way better. And against Minnesota, Christian Brown did a way better job against Ant than KCP did. Then we couple in the fact that Brown brings an element of shot blocking because of yes. his absurd athleticism. I think he has the potential to be a better defender, and that can happen as soon as next season with more opportunity. And then there's other layers that get unlocked. His cutting now becomes a yeah. big focal point of the offense. I think he's a better cutter than KCP. He's definitely more explosive around the basket and mm -hmm. is a stronger finisher. I think their transition offense, having him run downhill after out on outlets, I think that is an upgrade over KCP. Yeah. KCP, I, I don't know why people have made it sound like he's like irreplaceable. Christian Brown had moments where he was the most important player on the in, in certain games in the Nuggets finals run. In minutes that he had, he sparked runs. And now and, and now he's coming into his third season. You look at the numbers, he only averaged like three or four less points than KCP and played significantly less minutes. I mean, it's not insane to think he will match KCP's points output that he had last season, and then he can offer more as a defender. Right. It's really interesting because Christian Brown posted the third highest vertical in the 2023 NBA draft, or sorry, the 2022 NBA draft with a 40 inch vert. And then you compare that to KCP and he can do a little bit more on the defensive side as a, like you highlighted, weak side help defender. And around the rim, he does a lot. I think the main reason why people are going to value KCP so highly is that you can trust him to close games for you because he's not someone who has a weakness in his game. He can even come off full screens and hit mid-range shots for you. And in Christian Brown's case, he is a relative unknown because of the fact he only took two three-point attempts in his limited minutes. But I think, again, when you get to play alongside Nikola Jokic, you get a lot more open looks because of how often he is three reads ahead of the opposing defender. So for Christian Brown to finally get that vote of confidence by the front office to say, we think you're going to be a starting player, now it's just a matter of him uncorking it. His sophomore year at Kansas, he took five three-point attempts, made 34% of them. If he can do that again, he's not going to make as many of them, but he'll at least be able to keep the floor open. And I think the other part of this rotation who's not being talked about is Julian Strother because when you lose the three-point shooting KCP brought you're expecting Strother to step in I think he's gonna have a really big sophomore year matter of fact I think he's gonna come in make 36 percent of his threes on volume and really add an element which makes the Nuggets bench passable because with Russ and Christian Brown you highlighted the energy those guys are gonna be a tough perimeter defensive duo and they're gonna get out in transition they're gonna get a lot of open looks and I think Julian Strother can come in playing off Doro Sarch, and those two guys can have just enough offense to where it's not an abysmal bench. Yeah, I think Denver's versatility this year has just gotten much better. Russ with Sarich and with Strother, that gives you hope mm -hmm. for spacing. And then Pan Watson is another guy who I think is going to take another step. Maybe not a shooting step, but I think all around he'll just get yeah. much better as a player. And there's a lot of lineups that Denver can toy around with if they want to go a little bit bigger or if they want to have a Russ-only lineup. 
you can have Russ with Sarge with MPJ out there and then throw in Strother or somebody else. Maybe Brown stays in. Like there's a lot of different variations that the Nuggets can toy with that I don't think they had at their disposal last season because they just didn't have anybody they could trust. Everybody was very young still. Yeah. So I think this year that's what gives them an advantage and a disappointing fashion them losing in the second round. But just to put things into perspective, they lost in seven games to a team that was built to beat them. And in losing in seven games, they blew a 3-2 series lead in which the last two games of that series, they shot 21% on wide open threes. Russ ain't a, lot of, that. a lot of things went wrong against them. And they took a team that made the conference finals to the brink. And Jamal Murray was unhealthy for the run. Nikola Jokic's three-point shooting regressed tremendously. And if even if that comes back to the median, you're, you're getting much better offensive output. I mean, I think there are a lot of things that went wrong with the Nuggets. Right. And I, just because they lost KCP, I don't think the championship window has closed. I don't think KCP is that big of a difference in winning and losing a championship. Yeah, it's interesting because he didn't play well in that t Wolves series either. And as you highlight, a lot of things went wrong. They're up 20 points going to the second half of that game seven. So mm -hmm. you look at the Western Conference right now, I think Minnesota, OKC, and Denver are still in that first tier of clear contenders. Yeah, and I'm not trying to downplay KCP because I think he's very impactful. But if you win a championship, he will be like your fifth or sixth reason why. He will play great in moments, but he's not somebody you are ultimately relying on consistently. To be fair, outside of Derek White and maybe now OG, there's not a better fit starter in the game. Isaiah Hartenstein. Uh, he was coming off the bench partially, but I think of like two guards and threes, guys who are filling out in the perimeter. Dante DiVincenzo. Okay. He's not, I count OG, so I'm not. He's coming off the bench, and I, I think Dante is better than KCP. Dante is better than KCP. Yeah. I think right. we, we could go down a list yeah. and we could find players that make. A similar impact. You know, all I'm saying is I don't think KCP is irreplaceable. I think what he brought mm -hmm. to the Nuggets was great. I wish they would have kept him because it would have made them that much better. But the Zeke Naji extension really messed them up. And I, I seen Rip reports right. that they tried. They tried to extend KCP. They gave him the same offer Orlando gave him. He just went to Orlando. That I don't think that's true. That was reported. But then uh, his wife, I think, responds like that's complete cap. And honestly, I kind of believe it. Their ownership's cheap. Yeah, I believe his wife. She probably is in the know about that type of stuff.